the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Now open your mouth wide. Wider, Dr. Gillespie, a little bit wider. Confounded, Jimmy. What do you think I am, an alligator? No, I just think you're a human being who needs a regular checkup just like any other human being. Checkup. I never felt better in my life. I told you he'd act just like a baby, Dr. Kildare. Oh, is that so? Yes, that's so. How do you expect me to act with him poking me and you standing there like a vulture? Well, if your health is as good as it seems to be, there's no harm in having it verified. Uh, draw the blinds, will you, Parker? Oh, sure. Right. Well, now what are you going to do? Just have a look at your eyes. Turn out the overhead lights, Parker. Now, just you keep looking straight ahead of him. I know where to look. I was doing this before you were born. Hmm. You were doing it before Abraham Lincoln was born. Well, you ought to know, Parker. You were there. Oh, why? <laughs> there, please, Dr. Gillespie, just be still for a moment. Now, roll your eyes to the left. Hmm. Stay that way. Well, Jimmy, what is it? Uh, just eye strain, probably, but... Hmm. All right, Parker. Uh, lights on. Open the blinds again. Oh, now, don't be mysterious, Jimmy. You found something? Well, you, you tell me about it. Uh, have you been straining your eyes, uh, doing any special work away from the hospital? Uh, well, yes, just a little. Well, now, don't you be mysterious. All right, Jimmy, all right. I, I, I have been preparing a paper. On what? Well... A new method of establishing infallible controls in the use of antibiotics. If I'm right, it'll eliminate all guesswork with any reasonable number of test cases. But you've been working on that on and off for years. I know, I know, I know. But for the past few weeks, I've been working on them every night. Oh? Why the sudden rush to finish? Jimmy, I have been invited to read my findings at the International Scientists' Assembly at the Waldron Hotel next week. Oh. Why, Dr. Gillespie, well, that's wonderful. Just wonderful. Recognition by the International. Yes. Why did you keep it to yourself? I kept it to myself so that I wouldn't have you fluttering around me like, like a... Uh, a headhunter at a cannibal picnic. Well... The international. I knew it. I always knew they'd recognize your work sooner or later. This puts you in line for the Henderson Award, the highest honor in science. Ah, uh, now, hold your horses, Jimmy. Hold your horses. I am not the only one who will be reporting to the assembly. They pick three men every year. I know. One of the others may make a contribution much more important than mine. Uh, my money rides on you. Oh. Yes, and mine, too. They'd have to be crazy to pick anybody else. Well, thank you, Parker. Thank you. Jimmy? Uh, well, are you finished poking into me? Uh, what about my eyes? Well, just simple eye rises. Then why were you looking at me like Calamity Jane when you finished examining them? Because I didn't know the work strain you've been under. It simplifies the diagnosis. Well, what would your diagnosis have been if I hadn't told you about the paper? Oh, I... Oh, I'm afraid it might be a glaucoma. Glaucoma? Well, there's nothing to get excited about. You know the symptoms are similar to iritis. The symptoms may be similar, but the diseases aren't. Glaucoma is a mighty serious thing. Well, all your eyes need is a little rest. Uh, what else are you prescribing, Jimmy? Nothing. No, my Adriatic? 
Not even atropine? Not necessary. It's a mild case. Jimmy, a mydriatic is usually prescribed for iritis, but it would be very harmful in the case of glaucoma. Is that why you want prescribing? Oh, I knew it, I knew it. You know what? I knew you'd say that. You're a regular hypochondriac. Oh, is that That so? That is so, yes. Don't I have a right to know what's wrong with me? (laughs) Oh, you just forget all about glaucoma, Dr. G. Just Mm -hmm. concentrate on your dictation to Diana. We're pulling for you to bring home that Henderson Award. Come in. Are you alone, Dr. Kilvey? Yes, Parker. What's on your mind? Well, Parker, is something wrong? Well... Dr. Kildare, it's that horrible suit. Huh? No, 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 not your suit. His, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, oh, well, well, what about it? Well, yes, of course, you being a man, you'd never notice it. But he's been wearing that same suit for the past ten years, day in and day out. <laughs> well, I admit he isn't exactly a fashion plate, but that's not a serious ailment. Well, he'll never win the Henderson Award in that suit, mark my word. Oh. Now, you've got to make him buy a new one, and that's all there is to it. Well, I'm afraid there's much more to it. Getting Dr. Gillespie to go shopping is something like getting him to walk barefoot over hot coals. He'll fight every inch of the way. Besides, the award will depend on his paper, not the crease in his pants. Well, just the same. He looks like an unmade bed. And you know what they say, <laughs> clothes make the man. Yeah. Well, if we're going to get him into a new suit, he'll have to think it's his own idea. Oh, how are you going to do that? Uh, maybe I have a plan. What is it? Mm, psychological approach. With the help of my new patient in room 412. That French girl, that... Susan DeChamps? Why not, Parker? She's a female atom bomb. That's why not. (laughs) Well, remember, Parker, if we're going to get Dr. Gillespie into new duds, we only have five days. Drastic measures are prescribed, and psychologically, Suzanne DeChamp is the prescription. Prescription? Well, you'd better put poison on the bottle. No, 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 Parker. Fifty million Frenchmen can't be wrong. You just ask Dr. Gillespie to join me in room 412. See who play? All right. But more work and less civil play would be a lot safer. So, uh, that's our problem, Susan. Uh, will you help? But of course, Dr. Kildare. Good, good. Such a charming manner to pass away the time. <laughs> shh, shh, shh. There oh. he is. Come in. Uh, Parker said you wanted to see me, Jimmy. Uh, is it... The... Well, is this your little patient? Uh, Suzanne Duchamp, uh, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, such a great pleasure, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, uh, pleasure is all mine. Yes, yes indeed. Uh, uh, but, uh, what's wrong with this little lady, Jimmy? Oh, just a simple sprain of the knee. Nothing, really. Is it her, dear? Do you think a sprain could have serious complications? Oh, a sprain might have mighty serious complications. Oh, doctor. Don't worry now, young lady. We'll take care of that. You know, uh, I'm really pressed with other patients, Dr. Gillespie. I I thought I'd turn Susan's case over to somebody else on the staff. Now, would you suggest anyone? Well, somebody competent, of course. Yes, that's what I... If you're really busy, you oh, are. I, I, oh, I, I, I know that. Excuse my asking it. I, I might taking it over for you. Oh, I'm so glad you said that because there's a serious problem here that really needs clearing up. Oh, Suzanne is great fur to be left in the care of. Well, such a distinguished man. All right, Jimmy, you run along. Run yes, along, sir. boy. Miss uh, Susan will be perfectly safe in my hands. I'm sure everything will work out just fine. Goodbye. 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 Dr. Kildare. Hmm? Well, Parker, what are you doing on this floor? Oh, have you left him alone in there with her? Yes, and the plan is working like a charm. Oh. She'll make him conscious of that old suit in no time. <laughs>
Well, uh, how's my little patient this morning? Oh, I am fine, Dr. Gillespie. Uh, uh, I better have a look at you, just to make sure. Oh, no, no. Let me look at you. Uh. Stand there, just as you are. Oh, such a man, such a physique. Oh, it is too bad. What's too bad? Oh, that you do not have a greater care for yourself. To look so fine in some ways and so poorly in others. Poorly? Who looks poorly? I've never been better shaped in my life. But the shape is so hard to see as you are. Come, look in the mirror, Dr. Gillespie. Doggone it, I know what I look like. And you are not concerned? You do not care? Should I be concerned? Wait... Wait a minute. Has Kildare said anything to you about me? Oh, well, he's so uh, devoted to you. He, he could not come right out and say that... Uh, you, you mean, uh, is that bad? But of course. You have just let everything go. And now look at the condition you are in. The uh, bagginess, the fading color from too much use. Can you not see? See? So that's it. And Kildare wouldn't come right out and tell me. I knew he was pussyfooting around. I knew it. Fred, he said you would be very uh, difficult if he told you. Difficult? Yeah, I'm a doctor myself. Why didn't he tell me I was suffering from glaucoma? Glaucoma? That's the uh, American word for looking as you do. Well, what did you think it was? I write as... <laughs> I'm afraid Suzanne is confused. Well, I'm not. Not anymore. Return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Hello, Parker. Oh, good morning, Dr. Kildare. Dr. Gillespie left a message, wanted to see me, isn't he here? Yes, he's in the examination room. With the patient? Yes. Who? Himself. Himself? Himself, sticking his tongue out, examining his eyes in the mirror, <laughs> trying to convince himself he's got glaucoma. Glaucoma again? I'd better straighten him out before he... Oh, good morning, Dr. Gillespie. Good morning, Jimmy. Well, you're looking bright and chipper this morning. Yes, isn't he? Mm. He brightens up my whole day. Ah, uh, why don't you go and march yourself out of here? Well, I guess a girl has to be French to get treated decently around here. Girl. Girl? You haven't been a girl since Betsy Ross took up sewing. Oh, <laughs> Old witch. <laughs> Say, Jimmy, why didn't you uh, tell me I have glaucoma? Well, because you haven't. Ah, oh, don't tell me. I know what's been going on around here. Even mm. Susan commented about the bagginess around my eyes and the fading color. And... <laughs> oh, so that's it. Well, what's funny about that, Jimmy? I'll bet she wasn't talking about your eyes. She was talking about your suit. My suit? Of course. Bagginess of the trousers, ah. a fading color from constant wear. Constant wear. How much is it worn? I only bought it, uh... Oh, it was, uh... Ten years we... ago? Ah, uh, doggone it, Jimmy. It's a good suit. There's another ten years wear in it. Feel this weave. Oh, sure, it's a fine suit. Why, who'd ever notice this mark here by the lapel? Oh, it only got scorched a little once when, when that Bunsen burner in the lab flared up unexpectedly. I know, I know. And, and this hole here near the jacket pocket, why, you can barely see it. Oh, well, just a little. Some acid I spilled there a few months ago. It can be rewoven someday. Of course it can. Susan ought to know that. Susan? What's she got to do with it? 
Mm, you know how women are. She's probably been trying to get you to buy a new suit. What would I do with it? Wear it over this one? Now, don't be angry with her. Susan's spoiled, that's all. She's used to the uh, continental gentleman. Continental gentleman, huh? Ah. Mm, after all, I suppose it should be considered flattering. Well, what's flattering about having a good suit criticized? A woman doesn't generally make comments about a gentleman's dress unless she's uh, interested. Well... Of course, I know you wouldn't let that influence you. Oh, of course I wouldn't. Good. Neither would I. After all, my own suit is a little shine to it from where, but who cares? Well, uh, 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 Jimmy, now that's not the proper attitude. Well, why? Appearance is a very important thing. Oh, true, true, but this suit is perfectly no, no, good. Jimmy, and don't I... argue with me. You need a new suit. I guess I should set the example for you at that. I'll go shopping with you and buy a new one myself. Well, if you really think we should, but uh, I... Jimmy, I know what's best for you. Always have. Come on. Here we are, gentlemen. This is a new line, very fine quality... I'm certain we'll find the proper sizes on this rack. Ah, Would you like them, Dr. Gillespie? How about this blue with the pinstripe? Too loud? Too loud? It looks like the kind of thing you'd wear to a seance. Hmm. Haven't you got anything with a little more zip to it? Well, uh, we have some new grays, pearl grays. No, I'm afraid they'd be a little bit too... A little too what? Let's see them. Over here, sir. Here they are, with the powder blues and the canary yellows. They aren't very, uh, conservative, Dr. G. Jimmy, don't be an old man before your time. What are those suits over there? That to pass that partition. That, sir, is the college shop. Now, with each suit, you get a free ukulele, Junior. Well, there's no harm in looking. Where's Dr. Gillespie? Where would he be, Doctor? <laughs> well, don't fret, Parker. Susan leaves the hospital today, and victory is ours. See this box? Yes, what's in it? Dr. Gillespie's new duds, the raiment he will don for the meeting of the International Assembly when he wins the Henderson Award tomorrow night. Oh. I picked them up this morning when the alterations were completed. Look. He bought those? He did, Parker, of his own free will. Then you take it from me, Dr. Kildare, that Susan DeChamps isn't leaving this hospital one day too soon. Parker, fortunately for our plan, Dr. Gillespie has never asked Susan how she injured her knee. When and if he ever finds out, we'd better go and hide. <laughs> Dressed up and ready to leave us, huh? My knee. It looks as good as new, no? Yeah, yeah sure. It looks fine. And I owe it all to you, Doctor. Merci beaucoup. Well, <laughs> you're welcome. Yes, sir, you're welcome. I'll have to keep an eye on you, you know, after you leave here. See that you have no more accidents. Oh, this time I will be careful of the train. Oh, so that's how it happened. Uh, you were hit by a train. <laughs> Hit by a train? Oh, no. I trip over the train. How did you trip over a train? Oh, oh not the train that makes shoo-shoo. I, I mean the train that pulls after me. Hmm. The long train on my wedding gown. Wedding gown? Oui. I cash my heel while we are rehearsing for the wedding. Andre and me. So we postpone until tomorrow. Uh, you will come to the wedding? No. No. Oh. I have another engagement. I'm going to a prize fight. A prize fight? Who is fighting? Kildare and me. Jimmy? 
Jimmy? Parker? Now, 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 take it easy, Dr. G. Take, take it easy. easy, take it easy. Why, I ought to... Of all the low... Well, it looks like you found out about the train, which means that you, Miss... The boat, Romeo. Oh, Romeo. What are you talking about? Like, I, I don't even know what you mean. Oh, you know what I mean, all right. But you just won't admit it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have come in here screaming and yelling. I'm not screaming and yelling. I I just want to know why my office is littered up with all this, this junk. Junk? What junk? All we have here are the new clothes you ordered. I ordered? Jimmy Kildare, you high-pressured me into buying every single thing there. You and this, this female Lucretia Borgia with her snooping and plotting. I was not snooping and plotting. I just told Dr. Kildare that he had to get you and do a new suit for the assembly tomorrow night if you ever expected to win the Henderson Award. Well, I might have known it was your idea. Parker, now I got news for you. I won't wear the doggone thing. Oh, yes, you will. It really looks good on you, Dr. Gillespie. I won't wear it, I tell you. Now, you listen to me. This is one time you're not going to tell anybody. If you go before that assembly wearing that potato sack you got on... Potato sack? Uh, potato sack! If you do, I'll get right up while you're reading and tell everybody that you're a hypochondriac. Oh, and that ah, you're... no, you wouldn't dare. Oh, wouldn't I? Well, you just try me and see. Jimmy, do you think she would do a thing like that? Mm -hmm. Parker's a very determined woman at times. Ah, she's an old witch. That's what she is. <laughs> I don't know. There's no way you can stop her. Well, I don't care what she does. I'm not going to wear that suit. Okay, okay. Just the same. You better try it on. Yeah. You too, Brutus. <laughs> Come on, Caesar. It won't hurt a bit. Uh... Dr. Gillespie? Dr. Gillespie? Ah, uh, Jimmy. Oh. Parker, was I? Oh, you were fine. It was a wonderful paper. And you looked good, too. Ah, I feel like a stuffed monkey. Hey, the award committee's coming back to the platform. You'll be selected, I'm sure. Nah, nah, yeah. nah, Jimmy, no, I won't, I won't. There's the winner, that little man over there. Mm, Dr. Blanker from the Copenhagen Institute of Denmark. Ah. A great scientist, Jimmy. You heard his paper. Yeah. His classification of viruses is invaluable to mankind. Uh, quiet, please. The award yeah. announcement. It is my privilege to announce the winner of the Henderson Award for this year. Dr. Gunnar Blanker of Copenhagen. Oh! Good, 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 good. Oh. The only choice they could have made. I'm sorry, Dr. Gillespie. Sorry? Oh. Stop being sorry and beat your hands together. There's a great man going up on that platform, Jimmy. Mm. Hey, excuse me, I've got to congratulate him. Oh, he didn't win. After all his work. Oh! What can he do now? Start over again, Parker. Start on something new that may win the award next year, or the year after, or the year after that. Dr. Gillespie may lose, but he'll never quit. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Oh, 
morning, Dr. Gillespie. Huh? Uh, oh, oh, good morning, Jimmy. Good morning. Come in. Come in. Come in. Mm, quite a stack of notes you have there. Starting on a new project already? Well, it's something I've been meaning to get at for some time now. I suppose you noticed he's wearing that old potato sack again. Don't call this suit a potato sack. Don't call that potato sack a suit. You should be wearing your new suit, Dr. G. A new suit. Feels more like a straitjacket. I knew it looks good. Yeah. Uh, All right, here's the morning paper. Picture the assembly and Dr. Blanker, and here's one of you right on the front page. Well... Picture me? Mm-hmm. Oh, say, you look real nice. Real nice. Yes. <laughs> What's it say, Jimmy? Well, it says, uh, Dr. Blanker, winner huh? of the Henderson... Oh, no, no, where's the part about you? Oh, here. Dr. Leonard Gillespie, who received an ovation for his paper on antibiotics, was given a special citation by the committee after the meeting ended. Hmm. He was... He... Oh, no. Well, he was what? Go on, go on, Jimmy. Go on, go on. Uh, he was designated as the <clears throat> best-dressed doctor at the assembly. Best-dressed? <laughs> I gotta go to the wards right away. Well, I'll tell you, come back here. You'll need a jet plane to catch you today. Best dress. If only the committee could get another look at you now. You were. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Best dress. <laughs> In my potato sack. <laughs> yeah. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Joel Murcott and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Anne Diamond, and Junius Matthews. Dick Joy speaking. of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Now open your mouth wide. Wider, Dr. Gillespie, a little bit wider. Confound it, Jimmy. What do you think I am, an alligator? No, I just think you're a human being who needs a regular checkup just like any other human being. Checkup. I never felt better in my life. I told you he'd act just like a baby, Dr. Kildare. Oh, is that so? Yes, that's so. How do you expect me to act with him poking me and you standing there like a vulture? Well, if your health is as good as it seems to be, there's no harm in having it verified. Uh, draw the blinds, will you, Parker? Oh, please? sure. I... Well, now what are you going to do? Just have a look at your eyes. Turn out the overhead. On what? Well... A new method of establishing infallible controls in the use of antibiotics. If I'm right, it'll eliminate all guesswork with any reasonable number of test cases. But you've been working on that on and off for years. I know, I know, I know. But for the past few weeks, I've been working on them every night. Oh? Why the sudden rush to finish? Jimmy, I have been invited to read my findings at the International Scientist Assembly at the Waldron Hotel next week. Oh. Why, Dr. Gillespie, huh. that's wonderful. Just wonderful. Recognition by the International. Yes. Why did you keep it to yourself? I kept it to myself so as I wouldn't have you fluttering around me like a, a headhunter at a cannibal picnic. Well. The international. I knew it. I always knew they'd recognize your work sooner or later. This puts you in line, Lights, Parker. Now, just you keep looking straight ahead of him. I know where to look. I was doing this before you were born. Hmm? You were doing it before Abraham Lincoln was born. Well, you ought to know, Parker. You were there. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> there, please, Dr. Gillespie, just be still for a moment. Now, roll your eyes to the left. Hmm? Stay that way. Well, Jimmy, what is it? Uh, just eye strain, probably, but... Mm. All right, Parker, uh, lights on. Open the blinds again. Oh, now, don't be mysterious, Jimmy. 
You found something? Tell me about it. Uh, have you been straining your eyes, uh, doing any special work away from the hospital? Uh, well, yes, just a little. Well, now, don't you be mysterious. All right, Jimmy, all right. I, I, I have been preparing a paper. The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure of life. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. For the Henderson Award, the highest honor in science. Ah, uh -uh, now, hold your horses, Jimmy. Hold your horses. I am not the only one who will be reporting to the assembly. They pick three men every year. I know. One of the others may make a contribution much more important than mine. Uh, my money rides on you. Oh. Yes, and mine, too. They'd have to be crazy to pick anybody else. Well, thank you, Parker. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy? Uh, well, are you finished poking into me? Uh, what about my eyes? Oh, just simple eye rises. Then why were you looking at me like Calamity Jane when you finished examining me? Oh, because I didn't know the work strain you've been under. It simplifies the diagnosis. Well, what would your diagnosis have been if I hadn't told you about the paper? Oh, I... Well, I'm afraid it might be a 